welcome to Shanghai, China, for what I've no doubt is going to be a fantastic F1 qualifying session. Now then, Anthony Davidson, you're not getting any younger, but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you have that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. You're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now and it never gets any easier. Hi guys, Brown here and welcome to what is round 3 of my new F1 2019 season, season 2 and we're here today in China for part 24 of this new season and um, going off of what happened in Bahrain if you haven't seen that, check that out before you see this one we had some great racing in that um, I won't spoil it too much but in a couple of minutes I will go into the, the details so if you haven't watched it, check it out and then come back so we're here in China um, China it's an alright track, it's one of those tracks I'm not particularly keen on it but I'm quick round it so it's always good um, into, we're in Q1 you saw we just went P4 we slipped a little bit but that didn't stop us from getting into Q2 and you can see the drivers going out there um, Lance Stroll obviously in the drop zone and we've literally just missed it just 15th the, the lowest down we can be but into Q2 and um, track probably a bit optimum sort of this session so if we cross the line and we go P2 just behind Hamilton and hopefully we can still keep that and possibly do what we did in Q1 but I made a fatal mistake and I, I've tried to do what I did in Q1 and it has come back to bite me on the ass. we're starting 13th where it's going to be a wet Chinese Grand Prix let's get into it we're here in Shanghai The ever-tightening turns one and two will prove tricky in the slippery conditions here at Shanghai. And anyone that slides wide will lose a lot of time getting back on track. Turn 14 should still be the best place for overtaking, but we'll have to see some improvement in the weather before the drivers can take advantage of that DRS assistance. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Let's talk about Brown. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast, so they'll be disappointed, won't they? It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the star lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Verstappen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Butler, Magnussen, Vettel, Bottas, and Roman Grosjean, Perez, Brown, Robert Kubica, and Russell. Stroll, Faber, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Nico Hulkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo. Norris and Alexander Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So we're coming to be starting P12 after a penalty from Lucas Weber. And we're going to have to start on the full wet tyres, but it is meant to dry up and be dry at the end. But but let's get into it then as here we go it's lights out and away we go and everyone's going to be tiptoeing off the line you can see there as everyone struggles to find the grip and the traction to put it down obviously the full wet tyres have a lot of tread blocks as we go down the inside into turn 1 I wanted to go to the inside but we kind of got blocked off by the Williams the side by side of Gasly and Hamilton and the two Ferraris we're going wheel to wheel there with Kevin Magnussen in the house 
and up ahead I think that is Vettel going wheel to wheel with Giovinazzi down the inside we go on Kevin Magnussen they're squabbling now I think there's a bit of contact as well Hamilton takes the lead from Gasly from the two Ferraris from Devon Butler from Giovinazzi and there is everyone else flying through your screen heading into in the S section and now at the end of the back straight we're going we're still fighting with Kevin Magnussen round the outside we're gonna have to go at the hairpin and I think we have about done it now and we're gonna be chasing out a Sebastian Vettel in front of us as we head through the final corner and up towards turn one you can just see the amount of water sitting on the track and it's still coming down quite dramatically as well uh, so you don't really see from these angles how bad it actually is actually racing in it but you can kind of tell from the amount of water as we're trying to get past Factory Bottas is fact no this is Bottas coming back at us because the Alpha had so much pace in these wet con in these wet conditions he got past Magnuson and then he's gone and get got past us as well I couldn't get the traction down to overtake him the AI this year are so good in wet conditions it just you you go from obviously we're in a red bull and here comes Magnuson round our outside. But we've squeezed him out and he's actually now battling his teammate side by side, I think just about. We head into turn three and the AI in the wet. It doesn't matter what car you win, you could be in probably a maxed out Mercedes and it would still feel like a Williams to everyone else. As side by side with three abreast for a brief moment there with the two harsh drivers. Kevin Magnussen going wheel to wheel with us into turn 16 or whatever it is into the hairpin we're still side by side we've managed to get him on the traction I squeezed him a little bit there that was a little bit naughty heading into the final corner and on to the next lap then as here comes Vettel being overtaken by Bottas his teammate and now we're still battling away with Kevin Magnussen as he tries to go the long way around turn one we've squeezed him out and now he's left defending his teammate who's trying to go round the outside of him at turn three and I think he's just about done it Grosjean there no not not quite he's still there be careful boys they've come together so many times in real life this season and it's just about who gets the traction down here out of turn six and now into turn seven and Magnussen has just about fended off his teammate there as here comes Magnussen yet again down our inside into the hairpin trying to defend to the outside this is turning into a bit like the, the Claire battle isn't it <laughs> as he has overtaken us now but he stays out as it is time for the intermediate tyres here in in China onto the Inter as we go we're gonna have to wait and let cars pass us and now we're gonna trundle down the pit lane and hopefully we can maybe gain the time back on Kevin Magnussen as this is all on the same lap we're gonna go for the lunge down the inside of George Russell a bit of contact he is on the Inters I think we'll see here we can't see, <laughs> this is a bit awkward but we've got past the Williams and now we can just get our head down we've managed to just about break away from Roman Grosjean in the other house, here comes one of the Alpha to get him past um, Devon Butler, it is Valtteri Bottas round the outside at the final <laughs> hairpin side by side they go into the final corner oh that's tight such a tight corner the final corner to go side by side in and Devon Butler is going to have to admit defeat to Valtteri Bottas as out of the pits comes Kevin Magnussen and he has gained a lot of time on us by staying out that extra lap somehow so maybe the track 
wasn't at that optimum for the Inters when Jeff told me it was and you can see here we've caught the back of Giovinazzi who Magnussen had just beaten out and Magnussen has overtaken Butler as well you could have just seen on your screen there so we've lost that's probably about four seconds as we're on the back now Giovinazzi we have to get him quick in this race down the inside just like we did to the Williams of George Russell down the inside and we've got the job done it just seems this this season it doesn't matter what race it is we always end up having a fight with Giovinazzi because we've had that battle over seventh in Australia and then on the final lap in Bahrain as now we're on the back of our great rival Devon Butler as I don't think we're going to be able to go for the lunge he's definitely going to defend a bit more aggressively than George Russell and Giovinazzi did this is riding on board with Devon Butler he's gone wide and we've slid, we've got slid down the inside of him into turn 6 and he hasn't got a response there has Butler and we're past the Renault but is he done there he's got Giovinazzi just on the back of him as Devon Butler is sitting in our slipstream of course no DRS it's not it's not dry enough for that as he's gone for it on the outside and is out and have broken very early down the inside his contact he's picked pinched us into the apex of the hairpin and he's got past us here Butler we're gonna have to go to the outside into the final corner and we somehow stayed ahead of Devon Butler and now Butler's left defending Giovinazzi in the Mercedes round the outside into turn one camera's gonna cut Giovinazzi still just about alongside his front wings probably level with rear tyre but it's not now as Devon Butler just about stays ahead of Giovinazzi as we skip on a lap later and there's Giovinazzi on the outside at the hairpin but has to go defensive to the inside and now on the outside Giovinazzi still there is he going to go for it into the final corner yes he is down the inside they're still side by side this is great racing but I think Giovinazzi has just got ahead now and yes he has but Butler's not giving up his back down the inside sat in his slipstream for a brief second there down the inside into turn one that was a great move by Devon Butler Giovinazzi still there he's still there just about is the Italian driver and they're still side by side this is a great little scrap as they head through the King Canal towards turn six and Butler has retained that position and now Giovinazzi is just going to have to sit and wait probably for the straight and yes he is we skip on to the back straight to the outside Giovinazzi is going to go again it didn't work for him the first time he's going to try it a second and now Grosjean's getting in on the act he's just sitting there patiently waiting for an opportunity down the inside goes Giovinazzi on Devon Butler and he's got the job done and now Butler's going to have an awful exit compared to the house of Roman Grosjean who tries to go to the outside he thinks better of it as while well, that was going on we were just slowly eating away at Kevin Magnussen and the gap between him and us and we caught the back of him but we made a massive mistake as the track is pretty much dry enough now for the dry tyres as into the pits we come there's still a little bit of spray about Kevin Magnussen stayed out again and we're going to go on to a set of the soft and you can see there is nine laps to go and let's see if we can get these to the end of the race it's going to be tricky this first opening lap it's going to be very hard to get the tyres up to temperature you can see a McLaren on the back of us there still on the Inters 
we have to get these tyres up to temperature as quickly as we can as we've got them up to temperature very quickly as it's nearly contact there but the racing point of Sergio Perez and now he's going to come back at us here is Perez on our inside I think those inches pretty much be fried now you can see how dry the track is and we're going to get him into the hairpin before he can even think about going for the lunge which have so much more grip and we can break later with that grip it into the pits goes goes Paris there as we as we pitted and we're still just about behind Magnussen I think as here comes Gasly on Max Verstappen and Verstappen goes to the lunge on Devon Butler down the inside into the hairpin Butler hasn't really got a response there that Ferrari quite a bit quicker than the Renault but he's given him a run for his money is Devon Butler defends into the final corner and now out to the outside has to go Verstappen again Gasly's just sitting patiently waiting here and he's and he's gone very very wide as Butler and that's allowed Gasly just to sneak down the inside but Butler's still there on the inside for the next for the next corner and Gasly has got that move done there as here comes once again into the pits comes Kevin Magnussen and what is Haas doing here he was sitting in third place I couldn't catch him he had so much pace on that on those soft tyres the gap was just staying about around three seconds but Haas have decided to make another stop for onto the soft tyres Jeff was telling me to pit but there was like three or so laps to go and there was literally no points and Haas have just thrown away their first glimpse of a podium in F1 and going to hand us a podium finish for the second time in our career obviously we got that one in Italy last season and now we've pretty much been gifted a podium here in China. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Wow, what a dramatic ending to such a good Grand Prix in terms of strategy and everything. I really do enjoy races like that. Um, we had one retirement of Nico Hülkenberg here in the standings. You can kind of start to read into these now. Three rounds in. Hamilton still top. We're just kind of sitting there. You can see Gasly there in the constructors. We're currently P4 just behind Alpha and not really far off Ferrari just going to talk to Claire performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that you were cutting your way through the field during the race you must be thrilled to be up on the podium How did your team respond to the poor conditions today? You had a bit of a rivalry going on, but it looks like he bested you. Great. Well, that's everything. So we got kind of 
I don't know. I, I feel like it's not really a deserved podium. Magnussen was quicker in the in the dry conditions. As I was saying, um, Jeff was telling me to pit pretty much every lap for like the last five laps. He was like, pit this lap. The tyres felt all right, and there was no point pitting. But Haas thinking differently. Which I don't really get. They've just thrown away a podium. I didn't have the pace to catch Magnus, and the gap was just kind of staying in a three-second window. Every time I put it down, he put it back up. So I don't really see what they've achieved with that. They've just thrown away a podium and 15 points, as they were the some of the driver transcripts. If you want to read them, you can see we didn't upgrade on the aero as well. And this is something come. This was the standings from last season. You can see. I don't think I actually showed you this at the end of last season. So that was that. And that is pretty much it for this video. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. I think it was a very fun race to record. And perhaps a surprising end to it. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think of the Magnuson incident let's just call it that down below were Hash right to pit so it hasn't worked out for him or is that just the coding and the AI that was kind of the strategy that it put him on let me know in the comments below but until the next round in Baku goodbye